Ananias. I am here, Lord. Arise. Go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. Lord, I have heard of this man. How much evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And here he hath authority from the chief priests to bind all that call on thy name. Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. No one who knew the Pharisee, Saul of Tarsus. Not one who saw his relentless persecution of the Christians would have believed what one day this man would become. But from the beginning, the hand of God was in his life. Saul was born a Roman citizen in Tarsus, a Gentile city. As a youth, he was sent by his Jewish parents to Jerusalem to be trained in the Mosaic law. His teacher was Gamaliel, one of Judaism's greatest teachers, who gave him unusually in-depth training in the writings of the Old Testament and the law. All of these circumstances worked together to accomplish the Lord's purposes. The Lord knew what was required to effectively bring the gospel to Jews, Gentiles, kings, and rulers. And he placed Paul in circumstances that molded into him the unique combination of qualities needed. Physically, the prophet Joseph Smith gave this description of Paul. He is about five feet high, sharp face, small black eyes, penetrating as eternity, a whining voice, except when elevated, and then it almost resembled the roaring of a lion. Follow the labor of this apostle from the time of his conversion to the time of his death, and you will have a fair sample of industry and patience in promulgating the gospel of Christ. For 30 years, Paul labored tirelessly as an apostle and missionary, caring deeply for those he served. His knowledge and training allowed him to teach both Jews and Gentiles of all social levels what the gospel of Jesus Christ is and what man's responsibility is concerning it. For three decades, he traversed the Roman Empire, preaching the gospel and establishing the church. With great love, he cared for and nurtured the members of the church, writing letters to them, revisiting them, and strengthening them. And near the end of his ministry, he fulfilled the Lord's words that he would bear his name before kings and rulers. Leave him. King Agrippa and all men present. You see this man about whom all the multitude of the Jews has dealt with me, both at Jerusalem and also here crying that he ought not to live any longer. Wherefore, I have brought him forth before you, especially before thee, O King Agrippa, that after examination I might have something to write to signify the crimes laid against him. But 
thou art permitted to speak. I feel most fortunate, King Agrippa, to answer for myself this day. I beseech thee, hear me, patiently. My manner of life from my youth know all the Jews, that after the straightest sect of our religion, I lived a Pharisee. I verily thought I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth, and many of the saints did I shut up in prison, having authority from the chief priests. And when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them. I punished them in every synagogue and persecuted them even unto strange cities. Whereupon, as I went to Damascus at midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining round about me. And when we were fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. Rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee to make thee a minister and a witness. Therefore I continue to this day, witnessing both to small and great, and saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say that Christ should suffer, and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead. Paul, thou art beside thyself. Much learning has made thee mad. I am not mad, most noble Festus, but speak forth the words of truth and soberness. The king knoweth of these things, for I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him, for this thing was not done in a corner. King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. I would to God that not only thou, but also all who hear me this day were such as I am, except these bonds. Paul's commitment to the gospel of Jesus Christ was deep and total. And from the time of his conversion, when he turned his life completely over to the Lord, he was continually molded and shaped by the things which he suffered. Of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeyings often, in weariness, in painfulness, in hunger and thirst, in cold and nakedness. Yet I take pleasure in distresses for Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then am I strong. Shortly before his death, Paul was marched by Roman soldiers 132 miles along this ancient roadway, the Appian Way, toward Rome. The scars of chariot wheels from the days of Paul can still be seen. Had he not experienced a mighty change of heart, Paul might have lived his life in comfort and ease,
as a Jewish Pharisee. Instead, he chose the path that led here. Mamertine Prison, one of Rome's most ancient sites, is believed by many to have been the final holding cell for Paul prior to his execution. 12 feet underground, it was completely dark when sealed and could be reached only through this hole in the ceiling. I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them that love his appearing. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen.